Hello and welcome to a behind the scenes look at the Kluma pub quiz. From a technical point of view, a few people um, have been messaging me and emailing me and asking me um, how the pub quiz is set up, a few of the basics behind the software, the graphics, um, loads of people commenting saying it looks professional and slick, but it's something that can be easily achieved uh, with, a, with a decent enough laptop um, and a free piece of software. In front of me, I have my um, MacBook Pro, and for those geeks out there that like to know the stats, this is a 15-inch uh, touch bar uh, MacBook Pro 2007, uh, 2017 model. Really, it's, it's, it's the brain, it's the engine room behind um, everything. This is really all that you need to get started with um, something I like the pub quiz or to go live with. So yeah, the piece of software um, I'm using is a piece of software called OBS. It's a free bit of software, which is great. Uh, and then go ahead and open that up. So as you can see here, we have the software open and the last thing that was playing was the thanks for joining screen from the final pub quiz of series one. OBS basically, uh, when you first open it, it might look something similar to this. So the basics of it is, is that OBS is laid out in a way that um, can help you at first. Uh, and you can move things around as you wish. This is my custom layout um, for the quiz. Um, and I think in the view here, um, docks and toolbars, you can turn things on and off as to what, what you need and what you want. So yeah, on the left here, you can see that I've got um, a basic scene at, at the start here. These are just bits that you want to... Um, go between. Um, so these are just ways uh, to navigate through um, through the quiz, nice and simple. Um, and then as you would have noticed, as I change on the left here my scenes, the sources on my right here change as well. So as you can see, if I turn that off, that's just an image file and that's just the audio file. And you can see at the top of the screen here, the starting soon audio, I've got a, a level control as well. And you'll see, if I get rid of that, the audio goes. And then as we move through the intro video, obviously, um, that is just a video file, and obviously the audio is at the top here. And then we go live. Here we have the pub quiz overlay generic, which is just the Kluma pub quiz um, top left there. So if I turn that off, you'll see that that disappears. Uh, and then you'll see here the camera input. So if I get rid of that, you'll see that I disappear. Uh, and then my microphone as well. So everything is individual in OBS. Um, and you'll see here that the camera, uh, if I double click on this, any webcam that you've got plugged in that is uh, compatible with OBS or any USB um, input device that you have got, um, that will go into OBS as well. Uh, so that will appear on this list and you can click on that. You'll see a preview there of your beautiful face. Um, you can tell it what size you want it to be as standard um, and then just click OK and that will appear there. And, and this also, uh, this is layered as well. Uh, that's worth noting. Um, so everything at the top here will override everything below it. So you'll notice here that the if I move the pub quiz um, underneath the camera, because the camera is now above the uh, generic overlay, um, you won't see it. So everything has to appear, appear above it. Let's get onto the, um, the overlays here. Um, so you'll see that that is just a piece of text there. Um, but it seems to also be a full-size image, as you can see by the red lines. And it is, that's exactly what it is. It is a 16x9 um, graphic. So if I right-click on that, there's loads of different options that you can have a play with here. That's what it's about with OBS. It's just about playing and seeing what works for you. There's so many options, um, but we just use a few of them just to get the pub quiz going. Uh, but there's also a filters tab here. So if you right-click on something and click filters, you get some options, but the one that I use mostly is chroma key. And the original image there has a green background, uh, which is a bit of a clue as to how all of this works. And it's pretty simple, really. Um, if I take you to uh, my finder here, uh, round one, and I show you that, you'll get an idea of here of what is happening. So uh, it, everything that is green, basically like a green screen, becomes transparent in OBS. Yeah, uh, basically the way I make these is, is using uh, Keynote, as simple as that. So yeah, th this is how it works basically. It's just loads of um, green screen files. So if I uh, you know, copy one of these and duplicate it here, if I wanted to have something in the middle, I could do it and I could retype anything I want. Um, let's go, hello, this is a test page. Uh, put that at the bottom. Now you've got to bear in mind that um, you will 
I need to think about what is behind it. And then everything that's green is going to disappear, remember. So just using a, a standard shade of green. And then what I would do is just export that as a photo. So in most of these Keynote and PowerPoint, you can export as images for per slide. So something along the lines of file save as JPEGs or file export to images. And then I'll show you how we drop this in. Um, so uh, in any of your scenes here on the left, you can just drop them in by pressing the plus button and then image. There's loads of different options here that you can insert. All we do here is insert image. Um, then you can, it's gonna ask you for a name. Uh, that's what's gonna appear in the sources here. And then browse for it. Click OK and you'll notice that the green is still there. We need to now get rid of that green. All we do is right click and filters. Effect filters here with add and then click chroma key. And you'll see there that our um, thing has appeared, which is great. And if you need to make adjustments, again, you can you can just resize these um, and put them anywhere. And then in relation to adding videos and things like that, again, that's really easy. All you're doing is pressing add at the bottom, media source, name it, video, click browse, and then you've got a few options here before you click OK. You've got the option to loop the video. So once it's finished, it'll just continue looping forever. You've got another tick box here, which by default is ticks, which is restart playback when source becomes active. So the little eye icon that I've been using to show and hide things, what that basically means is that if I hide it um, and then I show it again, it will restart from the start. Uh, and then there's another option here, show nothing when playback ends. But then we just press OK and that video has become active. Now you'll notice that this video is a lot larger by the big box than my frame output here. Um, so you can manually mess around with this if you want. You just right click, transform, and fit to screen, and that will do it automatically for you. Another thing to note is the audio output of OBS. So you'll see in here background music has appeared because in my sources now I have a background music um, which is the one that you're all used to, the kind of tense, tension music, which is obviously left quite low. So my microphone, you'll see here, if I press on the settings cog um, and go to advanced audio properties, you get a few more options here. And you'll see here that the background music at the top there, the volume, you can, you can edit um, by one decimal point if you wanted to. Uh, fine adjustment, uh, from, ticket for mono if you want mono. Um, you can even balance it left or right. Um, uh, sync offset if you've got some issues with audio sync. And then audio monitoring, this is another bit to uh, keep an eye on. Um, so you'll notice that if I go back to uh, the video that we inserted here and I play it, uh, we can't hear the audio for that video even though there is audio. You'll see at the top left of the screen here, the, uh, the, the audio level meter is showing audio but we can't hear it. And there's a reason for that, by default, um, the monitoring of the audio is not present on the laptop. So even though the audio would be going live on the stream, um, you won't hear it live. But I tend to quite like to have um, a little bit of audio just so I, I know that it's happening. So the way you can do that is press on the cog, advanced audio properties, and then here you'll see the video at the bottom. Um, and here you'll see audio monitoring is currently off. So at the moment, monitor off, the output is on, so people on your stream could hear it. But if I turn monitor only output off, that basically means I will hear it, but no one on the stream will. And if I click monitor and output, now everyone on the stream will hear it, and so will I. And then you'll see here as well that my microphone, my monitor was off because I didn't need to hear myself back. So you'll notice at the moment that I haven't got any audio from my mic there. If you press the settings cog, uh, and again press properties, uh, you've got the device option here, so it's, it's popped up now. But I've got a few options here, built-in microphone, which is obviously the built-in microphone for the Mac. Um, then the Scarlett 2i2 USB sound card, which is the one I am using. So if I click that and OK, you'll see then that I have got audio level there. Audio properties, my microphone, monitors off, um, but I've ticked mono because um, I've got a two channel mixer and I'm only going into one of the channels, which automatically puts it at left. Um, so um, I've slid over to left because that's the one I want to use and ticked mono. 
Keeping OBS organized is probably one of my um, key tips for um, live streaming with this software. Um, on the left hand side, your scenes um, column, obviously um, clicking those takes you to different um, sources on the right. So how about actually going live onto YouTube or uh, whatever platform you'd like to go live on. Um, so let's have a look at that into that now. So if you head over to OBS and preferences or settings or wherever it is on the Windows and Linux version, this is the one way you're telling it where you'd like to stream to. Uh, and again, if you look on the services here, there's absolutely loads. Uh, and if you press show all there, there, again, there is just loads on there that you can uh, stream to. And then there's your stream key as well. Um, this is the bit that tells the software where to stream to. Um, so you can get this from your YouTube um, account. I'll quickly just run you through that now so you have a basic idea of that. But if you head to YouTube um, and head to your YouTube account, uh, then on the top right here, you'll create and then press go live. So create a title, um, so new live stream. Uh, description, this is going to be amazing and you'll see down here that um, I've got uh, a stream key option uh, auto generated key is absolutely fine if you press the view button there you'll be able to see your stream key I'm not going to show you that but you, all you need to do is hit copy not copy it to your clipboard go ahead to OBS and simply paste that into your stream key and press OK uh, then we've got a few options really we, um, would, we want to make sure here that we um, are on the first slide or scene that you would like to show live. Uh, make sure that your microphone isn't in there because you don't want people to hear you before you're live. I tend to only have the microphone in my uh, scenes that have the video. Um, so yeah, we're here holding in the holding scene here uh, and we're basically ready to go live. Now we've got some controls here on the right. We've got uh, start streaming, start recording, studio mode, settings and exit. Exit obviously exits OBS. Settings takes us to that familiar settings page that we went to earlier. Studio mode takes us to this split screen view, which if anyone is familiar with um, live streaming or broadcasting software, um, you have something called preview and a program feed. So your preview feed would be something that you would see only um, and wouldn't be live and a program feed is uh, your output to your audience. So when you're in studio mode here, when you change scenes now, that is just a preview. So you can see on screen me here, um, and uh, I can just see myself. Uh, none of the audio has gone live. It's just a preview of me, um, and the program feed is still the output. I tend to use this if I'm already live, and I need to make sure that I've got the framing right. So coming out of studio mode, you've got to start recording above that. That simply just takes a recording file um, and puts it on your desktop or wherever on your computer. And then above that, we've got the start streaming button. So if we press the start streaming, that is now streaming the data to YouTube. So if you look at it as a flow chart, you've got OBS right at the start, you've got YouTube, and then you've got your audience. So there's a few different steps you have to take there. Um, OBS, we've now told it to stream to YouTube using that streaming key. That makes YouTube and OBS talk to each other. And now we need to tell YouTube we are ready to go live to our audience. So the way we do that is if we go back to the YouTube studio, um, you should then see a preview of your feed top left. And um, here we go, it is coming in live, which is great. Now, as I mentioned, we've not gone live here to our audience yet. We've gone from OBS to YouTube. We now need to go from YouTube to our audience. And the way to do that is this blue button at the top here, go live. There is also a really useful feature on OBS called hotkeys. So if I go back to settings and hotkeys on the left hand panel there, there is settings or hotkeys for absolutely everything, every scene, every media item that you've got in your um, profile here. Hotkeys are really useful. You can get all sorts of external devices, USB devices as hotkeys as well. Or you could just have a simple keyboard at the side that you could label up maybe. So there we go. I hope you've liked this video. If you have and you found it useful, hit that like button for us. That would really help. Um, and keep up to date here on the YouTube uh, channel for Kluma and hit that subscribe turn your notification bell on to get emails for when we regularly upload new videos to the channel and you can join us again for specials and series 2 coming up later in the year um, so yeah thanks for watching um, feel free to send this link out to people if, it, if it's helped you um, and uh, hopefully we can get more people live streaming more people connected and more people just understanding how um, how simple these 
bits of software can be and it can be daunting at first um, but actually just with a few JPEG images with a green background um, you can do a really good well presented pub quiz online or anything that you can think of really um, to connect with people and entertain the nation so yeah thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time